Hello, so today we're going to have a look at the Garmin GNS 530 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the GPS within many of the aircraft, many of the light aircraft in the simulator. It's had a huge upgrade as of the 40th anniversary update to the simulator, so I thought we'd go in and take a look at it. So if we say so ready to fly, we're in the de Havilland DHC2 Beaver in the simulator. We're just going to clear some things out of the way so they don't annoy us too much in the sim. So let's go and go into the weights and balances and just zero them out, which will make the co-pilot vanish. So we get a clear view of what's going on around the cockpit. So here's the GNS 530. I have configured a custom view that put us straight in front of it, which is quite helpful. I've done some videos on custom views. I think you just press Control Alt on a number to set a view and then Alt on that number to reuse that view. So we'll turn the power on in the aircraft, we'll turn the radios on and we'll press Alt and 1, which I've got configured in this aircraft for this GPS system, and we'll see its boot up sequence. So they've simulated the boot up of the actual thing. It goes through several checks and balances as it boots up. And we just sit and wait here while it reads out all the different things it's going to do. It's quite interesting to watch because once we get past the first couple of pages, it does something quite interesting. So we just give it a moment. It will come up with a list of all its data sources in a moment. Notice the 530 and the 430 are almost identical. It's just one's a bit bigger than the other. So we press enter and enter again. So enter and enter again. And now what it's doing is locating the satellites in the sky overhead. If you've ever had a, an old school GPS system, you'll have seen them doing this. So it's reading the strength of the signal from the various satellites overhead. And as it gets a strong signal, it will fill in that bar graph. And then we'll be able to use the GPS system. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. Sometimes it's very fast. So we'll just sit here and wait. There's a bit of a pregnant pause while we're waiting for it. Here it comes. So it's picked up the satellites. They do move around each time you load it. So I suspect, I don't think it's completely random. They're probably doing some work with that. You'll notice the 530 got there before the 430. So it does appear they've simulated the 530 being a bit faster. Okay, so we're just gonna focus on the 530, not the 430. They are functionally almost identical. It's just that this is a bit bigger screen. It's nicer to look at. Okay, so when you first load the 530, it has this screen, which is an overhead view of the aircraft on the map. You can change this, and we'll get to that. But before we get there, let's have a look around. You've got lots of shortcut buttons around the edge of the GNS 530. There's a button here for flicking the COM frequencies between active and standby. There's the same for the VOR frequencies. There's a readout of some data here for the VOR station you're tuned into, the radial from it that you are on, and the distance to it. You've also got the mode of operation of the GPS, so you can change that between VLOC and GPS. So that basically means are you tuning in... Um, or is the autopilot, sorry, going to be using the the programmed route in the GPS or is it going to be using the VOR radios? Yeah, so OBS isn't functional, I don't think, within the simulator yet. I think in the real world, the OBS button would correct your course to the direction you're traveling. Message does work. You'll get a message enunciation pop up sometimes telling you things like the direction you should be flying for the next leg. So it'll pop up... It will start flashing and you press the message button and it tells you that. Flight plan is where we can program flight plans, which we will be doing. VNAV is where you can configure the altitudes you'll be flying at so the aeroplane can, if flying on autopilot, can fly through them. Um, procedures. You can actually program SIDS and STARS into the flight plan and have the aircraft follow them. So standard instrument departures, standard approach routes, which are sequences of predefined waypoints. Um, you can change the range. So if you click up, you're raising the kind of camera, if you think about it, higher into the sky. If you click down, you're getting closer to the ground. So, you know, zooming in. You've got a direct to button for if you press it 
all the, all these buttons are context aware in a strange sort of way. So if you press direct to, it's going to pop up a dialog asking where are you going direct to. The menu button by the same token. Look, if we press menu, we can do things like setting up the map. Within there, you can do things like um, I'll get to all this in a moment. What we're actually doing here, we can set things like um, the orientation of the map. So let's clear back out of there for the moment. Um, clear, as you just saw, gets you back out of things or deletes things. If you hold clear on, it brings you back to the back to the map screen. And enter obviously is used to confirm things. Now both of these knobs at the bottom corners have an outer dial, which you can see here for the com radios changes the integers. The inner dial changes the um, the decimals, and if you push. It changes between the com radio and the VLOC or the navigation radios. So if we press that, you'll see the focus change. So that's how you get to tune the different frequencies. Um, yeah, by the same token over here, if we let's go and program a route, then it will I can illustrate exactly what this does. So if we press FPL to program a flight plan, we are at KSMX, which is Santa Maria. So let's go and have a look at little nav map just to get our bearings. We are at KSMX, Santa Maria, on the west coast of the US. And we're going to fly up to Monterey, which is KMRY. So how do we put those into our flight plan? Now, if you are using Flight Simulator and you have programmed your flight in at the map screen on the way into the simulator, by the time you get an airplane on in an airport, if you come and look at this flight plan, it will already be in here and you will have a magenta line on the map showing you where you're going. You can do it by hand in the instrument in the same way that a real pilot would. So if you want to take your kind of simulation onto the next level away from it being a kind of a toy and you actually want to see how the real pilots do it, try this out. It's great fun. So once you're on the flight plan screen and you can toggle it on and off just by pressing it, we need to put a flight plan in. So you push the button in the middle of this and it puts the focus in. This works for any dialogue. So if you've got a dialogue on the screen where there are fields in it that are in black, you can press the knob and the focus will change if it can to the field, you know, for you to fill in. So we want to actually put a waypoint in. To do that, we roll the inner knob. So the general idea is the outer uh, knob moves or outer dial moves your focus through fields the inner knob configures a field so while we're on this field we roll it and it pops open a context aware dialog it knew that we're after an identity of somewhere so it's popped up a lookup on the database in the aircraft or in the GPS so we are going from KSMX so to key something in, notice the focus is not the whole word now, it's one character. So to move through the characters, we can use the outer ring. To change a character, we can use the inner ring. Notice it's doing a live lookup as we do so. So K, outer ring, to move the character. S, now we can go either way. We can either go up through the alphabet or backwards, through the numbers, and then back through the end of the alphabet to S. K, S... M, so we'll go forwards to M, I, J, K, L, M, oops, I'm not great with the mouse, and X, so we'll go backwards to get to X quickly. So there we go, so it's looked up Santa Maria, that's the airport where we are, and we press enter, and that's put it into the flight plan for us. Okay, so the next thing we want to do then is KMRY for Monterey. So if we roll the inner knob while it's flashing on this field, it will pop up the same lookup. Now, there's a shortcut built into this. Notice this little icon next to the field that's flashing. If we click it, it highlights. It's actually a keyboard. If it's highlighted, we can use the keyboard. So K-M-R-Y. It's a lot quicker than using these knobs, isn't it? So press Enter. We've now got our basic flight plan from Santa Maria to Monterey. So if we press the flight plan button, we can see there's our magenta line. If we zoom out, if we zoom out far enough, we'll see both ends of our flight. 
we're having to zoom out quite a long way aren't we there we go notice it's decluttering the further we zoom out so it doesn't just make a complete mess of the map okay so let's open that flight plan again and let's have a look on here so what if we wanted to go via somewhere en route so i'm going to right click in little nav map and say let's go via this avenal vor so come back into the sim ave was the code for avenal how do we get that into our flight plan we press the button to get the focus back in here we can use the outer ring to move the focus around what we do is we put the focus over the waypoint we want to push down yeah and then we do a normal lookup so we roll the inner knob and again we could use the knobs to choose a then the next character then v and so on or we can use the keyboard so we'll use the keyboard a v e avenel press enter to accept so it's now put ksmx and then an en route waypoint of avenel and then kmry to remove the focus from here we press this again and it just toggles it and then press flight plan and you can now see our route takes us from Santa Maria to Avenal and then on to the destination there's more let's go and look in the flight plan we can press the menu key notice the me I said earlier the menu key is context aware so it knows we're doing a flight plan so the options are related to doing a flight plan so we can as with any of these dialogues the outer ring will change the the option and then we can press the enter key to confirm something so we want to select a departure so we highlight departure and we press enter and it's immediately switched over the chapter and page of the interface to the waypoint database we'll come back to this and have a look in a minute at the various pages and you can see it's showing us the departures available from the airport we're at and there's only one and this is the one so Buelt 4 so we press enter on that or we can get to it from runway 2 12 or 30 so we'll just say runway 2 enter and there's a transition so transitions are the exit point of a departure onto other airways yeah so we're going to say FLW is the transition point you know how we're going to leave the leave the the um the procedure I should say so then press enter and it's done it okay and so that's giving you a preview of it you still need to load it so we enter and load it so now it's put those waypoints into our flight plan so we've got KSMX then Buelt FLW and then onto the rest of the route that we'd already programmed let's go and do the same thing in little nav map so you get to see it very visually if we right click on this on this you know on Santa Maria and show the departure procedures now it's an element of here's one I prepared earlier so here's the SID for runway 2 the Buelt 4 there's the transition if we right click on that and insert that you can see it's highlighting it on the map what it's going to look like so if we insert it it puts it in it becomes orange so look it's doing leaving runway 2 then going to Buelt then FLW and then on to AVE so let's compare this KSMX that's Santa Maria Buelt FLW AVE okay so if we press flight plan again you can see it's actually drawn it in here as well now obviously if we were to zoom in you get to see the actual symbology of the the VOR stations and so on and so forth and the, the sectors we're flying through and all that kind of thing but that's the basics of programming flights into the simulator directly into the GPS itself it's not too difficult okay having done that I think it's worth having a look around some of those other screens that we talked about okay so we mentioned this is a chapter and these are pages when you first go into the sim because we haven't changed it yet you will be seeing nav which is the first chapter and the second page of the nav chapter if we roll the inner knob that will move the pages within a chapter if we roll the outer knob 
while looking at the map we will move the chapter so we are on the leftmost chapter so rolling left doesn't do anything if we roll right we see waypoints so that allows us if we roll through the pages of waypoints we can search for airports and again it's the same deal as before we press the button the focus goes in there so let's try it see if we press it again it comes back out so we can look up information on all the sources of data that are in the database so there's airports there is oops sorry wrong one <laughs> uh, next page is showing you runway information so again you can actually pull up specific runways at an airport to find out their dimensions and the nature of the surface um, you can get the com radio frequencies on the third page the next page is the approach routes then you've got arrivals and then you've got departure routes which you just saw a moment ago when we used one you've got intersections so that's the corridors ndbs non-directional beacons vors so um, radio beacons for you know uh, vor navigation and user points so you can actually program your own points into the map if you really want to so you can use a reference waypoint and a radial and distance or you can use a position you know longitude latitude okay so that's the the waypoints chapter then you've got auxiliary this this isn't complete but bits and pieces of it work if we flick through the pages in auxiliary you get to see things like checklists and stuff like that but not, like, as I said, not all of it's there. Um, you can change the units being used within the interface, backlighting options, things like that. But yeah, we're not going to get too far into that. Um, and then you get nearest is the final chapter, the fourth chapter. So this gives you a lookup very briefly of things that are near you. So nearest airports to where you are right now. So this updates dynamically while you're flying. Nearest intersections nearest ndbs nearest vors and and that's it okay so let's go back to the nav one and have a look at the pages here finally because these are the interesting ones if we roll the inner knob here to move through the pages of nav so as i said by default you're on page two let's go and roll left page one gives you this wealth of information about your flight so we are on the leg from ksmx to the climb out at 670 feet at the first waypoint yeah we it also gives you you know um, the track direction it gives you the distance to the next waypoint it gives you your tr you, the angle you're traveling at um, it gives you your ground speed and ETE which is your en route timing so estimated time en route so it's to the next waypoint So if we click, if we roll this right, we come back to that default view. If we roll it right again, we see the terrain view. So the terrain is highlighted in color for altitude. If we roll it right again, we see a traffic around us with six miles and two mile rings around us. And if we roll it right again, we see the status of the GPS itself. So as, as I kind of hinted at earlier, there's a lot of functionality in here. And some of it isn't quite complete, but there's a lot to play with. And just being able to pull up this, you know, this nice track facing view while you're flying along. I mean, I had seen bits and pieces of this by accident in the past, and it's only really recently that I've delved into it to find out exactly what's in here. And it's really, really useful stuff. Okay, so I don't want to get too, into too much more detail than that today. Um, we've looked at all kinds of functionality around programming it up and, you know, cha changing your route and programming your route. If you wanted to change your route, by the way, all you have to do is come into the flight plan page, put the focus in, and then you can roll through. You know, you can insert, as we said, or if you didn't choose it, if you decided not to for example you could just clear out what we've just done for example or press the the cursor there we go just keep pressing clear notice i said earlier if you keep 
if you hold clear down it takes you back to the map if you get hopefully hopelessly lost so we can hold this down and it we're back at the map if we're in the flight plan and we've made a real mess of it you know either by accident or we've just been messing around and made a real mess of the flight plan and we've put things in we didn't mean to and so on and so forth we can just go to the menu key and you can delete the entire flight plan and start over again yeah so it's not too difficult to do so in that case you just use the outer ring to move down delete flight plan press enter delete all waypoints in the flight plan and just say enter again and it's gone so it's as simple as that and you know this has decluttered itself we can come back to here and zoom back in and we're back where we started so hopefully this gives you some indication of how useful that system is and actually how much functionality it's really got so the one thing I really didn't touch on and you can't without flying is the CDI button while we are flying along if you're wanting to use these VOR or sorry nav radios using the HSI's you need to have this switch to VLOC for them to work in relation to the nav frequencies that are tuned in if you switch them to if you switch this to GPS they will not be reflecting the frequency of the VOR they will be reflecting the GPS location of the aircraft yeah so it's just to be aware of that really that if you're wanting to use this for ILS for example this needs to be changed to VLOC if it's in GPS ILS won't work okay anyway I'm gonna leave it there hopefully that was instructive and I'll see you again soon